I'm Bob Eckel at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus in Aurora, just east of Denver. And uh, I'm here to report on a publication just released by the American Heart Association that deals with cardiovascular disease in patients with type 1 diabetes. And I was a senior author on a multi-authored paper that Sarah DeFerrante from the Boston Children's Hospital uh, assumed the role of the first author. The purpose of this uh, manuscript really is to bring to light the fact that cardiovascular disease in patients with type 1 diabetes may not be the same entity that it is in type 2 diabetes. And I should point out, too, the American Diabetes Association teamed up with the AHA on this document, so it's been reviewed by both organizations. But I think a couple of the key points that we want to bring forth on this manuscript is, is number one, are the risk factors the same? And, and they may not be. Other than duration of diabetes and perhaps hypertension and perhaps glucose control, that could be debated. You know, the risk factors for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and type 1 are quite a bit different. The lipids are very different. I mean, patients with type 1 diabetes have higher levels of HDL cholesterol, but yet they have a burden of cardiovascular disease, particularly the atherosclerotic form. So why is that? Is the HDL not working correctly? Or, in fact, is, is the high HDL, in fact, dysfunctional, in fact, causing harm? I don't think we have an answer to that. So what are the other risk factors that relate to atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and type 1 diabetes? And this manuscript really reviews all the potential risk factors and brings you up to date on that, but really reveals the fact that we don't know a lot about the atherosclerotic disease in patients with type 1 diabetes. Another area is the plaque. Is the plaque the same? Is it so lipid-laden? And not only is HDL higher in type 1 diabetic patients, but actually LDL cholesterols are the same or lower. Triglycerides are almost never abnormal unless control is pitifully poorly controlled. So I think we've got these issues related to the plaque itself. Maybe the plaque is less lipid laden. And I think one hypothesis is the plaque is more calcified, more fibrotic, and may actually be more stable in patients with type 1. Is the disease the same? Another area is the acute coronary syndrome setting. When the late George Eisenbarth and I did an editorial, actually in science, translational science, before George uh, left us, unfortunately prematurely, we brought up the fact that the acute coronary syndrome has never actually been studied in type 1 patients. Everything that links diabetes to cardiovascular disease is type 2. But in fact, what the group at the Johnson has identified is that after a myocardial infarction and a mouse model of type 1, there is an antibody-mediated myocarditis developed. But when George and I wrote the editorial, we couldn't find any evidence that the acute coronary syndrome has actually been studied well in patients with type 1 diabetes. In fact, is there an antibody-mediated myocarditis that results in a greater likelihood of congestive heart failure in the acute coronary syndrome in patients with type 1? We don't know. And finally, interventions in type 1 just haven't ensued. What about statin trials in type 1? When do we start a type 1 child with type 1 diabetes on a statin? What about antihypertensive therapy and cardiovascular disease outcomes in patients with type 1? And I think what the manuscript does is really reveal these absence areas of knowledge about type 1 diabetes and how it relates to coronary heart disease and peripheral vascular disease and stroke in patients with type 1 diabetes. In fact, I think what we've learned from this is that there's so many unanswered questions that when I was at a meeting at the NIDDK in the last year, Ultimately, I brought to the attention to NIDDK that this area really needs more science. And in fact, what's happened subsequent to that is that NHLBI and NIDDK are sponsoring a joint symposium, a workshop on coronary disease and type 1 diabetes that's going to take place this October. So we're excited about the opportunity to bring scientists from around the world together on a topic that's been poorly studied. And I think this manuscript in circulation really highlights the need for additional science and medicine in this particular area.